hello viewers welcome back to the channel today i want to show basics of constraint in sketcher workbench when we discuss constraints we want to understand the degrees of freedom of a point a line and a 2d sketch objects constraints are applied to eliminate degrees of freedom one thing to note here is that i excluded the time domain so this is going to be a basic tutorial to understand degrees of freedom and constraints in Sketcher Workbench. So this is a point in space and it has three degrees of freedom. It can move in X direction, it can move in Y direction, and it can move in Z direction. Now let's go into the Sketcher. I'm going to select the XY plane. Now, if I create a point here, this has only two degrees of freedom. So it can move only in X direction and only in Y direction. Okay, let's make it complicated. Let's draw a line. Now, how many degrees of freedom a line has? We got this point can move in X direction, this point can move in Y direction, and this point can move X direction as well as Y direction independent of this point. So you have four degrees of freedom uh, for a line. Okay, let's make this even more complicated. I'm going to draw two lines. Okay, now because there are two lines, there should be eight degrees of freedom for these two lines. So now what if I do connect these two lines? So what I'm going to do is to use this coincident constraint and then connect these lines. Okay, now this, because it now connected, I have a constraint applied. Now this constraint equal, actually this uh, coincident constraint equal to two degrees of freedom. So I remove two degrees of freedom out of those eight degrees of freedom. Okay, so I need to apply si still six more constraint to fully constrain this. Okay, so let's start doing that going to apply a length constraint and I have another length constraint here. I'm going to apply an angular constraint in between the two lines. Now then I need to con position constraint, apply some position constraint, one and then one over here. So I have already applied six now. Still they, it still can rotate, so it's not fully constrained. So I need to have another constraint applied here, uh, angular constraint. Now it is fully constrained. This green, when it is appear green, that means it is fully constrained. Okay, let's explore this further. If I have a rectangle drawn here, so what do I have here? So I got number of constraints automatically applied in this box. So you've got four coincident constraints. Two of them, are, uh, this, is, this is the vertical constraints and these are horizontal constraints, okay? So now I got, so typically I have rectangle have four lines. So if I have four lines, I need to have four by four, 16 degrees of freedom, right? But it is already, there are eight constraints applied, but as I said earlier, this, this one coincident constraint is equal to a two degrees of freedom. So I have constrained 12 degrees of freedom out of those 16 in this rectangle. Okay, so I need to add four more constraints 
to fully uh, constrain this rectangle. So let's do that. So I'm going to apply a length constraint. And I'm going to apply another length constraint. I'm going to apply another position constraint here. Another position constraint, which is a horizontal constraint. So I already applied uh, 12. Now, as you see, it is now fully constrained. Okay. Okay, let's step back and use this solver message here to figure it out how many constraints you have to apply to your model. So if I click on this, you can see that here right now it's empty sketch. So if I create this rectangle again, now you can see that it is under constraint by four degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, um, if, I, if you start applying constraints, then you will see that uh, it, it will start uh, reducing these degrees of freedom. So if I click on this and apply a constraint, now it is three. If I apply another constraint, it becomes two. Now, at this point, you can stop if you want. I mean, I have seen some people don't you fully constrain the models because this geometry is fully constrained now and you don't need to use any more constraint, but it still can move around as you see. So if you want to prevent it moving around and it is in two degrees of freedom, so you have to apply one here and one here. So if I go ahead and apply that, now it's only one degrees of freedom. Uh, now, of course, you see, you can click on it to get a feel for what the where that degrees of freedom, missing degree of freedom is. Sometimes it is good. Sometimes it just gives you a, a, a flavor of where it is, but sometimes it doesn't. So what you can do is, um, you know, if that helps, yeah, you can use it, but most of the times it doesn't. So you have to kind of a manually or uh, intuitively understand where that missing uh, degree of freedom is. In this case, I know where it is. It is between these two points. So if I click on this, uh, and then it'll it'll give me the uh, that missing degrees of freedom. So I just need to apply another uh, constraint here. So let's study further about constraints. So here in this cage, I have uh, all kinds of constraints added. You can see that uh, here in this box, so many constraints are added. Now, in reality, in CAD, there are two types of constraints, okay? The geometric constraints, and I can show you these are the geometric constraints. Uh, if I draw a box here, these are more like the geometric constraints. And there are also dimensional constraints. These are dimensional constraints. Okay. So what are the geometric constraints? The geometric constraints are like, you see, these two lines are perpendicular. So that's a you are controlling the geometry of the relationship between these two lines are controlled by you know applying a, uh, the perpendicularity constraint okay now here you have a tangency constraint between this arc and these two lines okay so that's a geometric constraint even you have this vertical line uh, which is controlled by this vertical constraint and the horizontal line is controlled by the horizontal constraint now these are dimensional constraints okay so dimensional constraint is essentially control the size of the the dimension of the line so that's why it, there are two types of constraint i said one is the uh, dimensional constraints 
and other one is the geometric constraint and you apply both types to fully constrain the model okay 